So a power series. So obviously a series series is a summation. We'll use n's. We're only going to be looking at infinite series. So this is what series was before. And it was a0 plus a1 plus a2 plus dot, dot, dot. Now there's no n term on here because you're adding an infinite number of terms. So it just goes dot, 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 like that. What was the most useful test for convergence? What was the best test? Ratio. Ratio test is the best test. Root test is the second best test overall. So we'll use the ratio test. So it's if a n is had to be greater than zero. So if a n is greater than zero, we're going to let rho. So it looks like a p, but it's actually a row. If it was a p, it would have an extra piece like that on it. It would have a little, I don't know, handle on the back or something like a lawnmower, but it doesn't, so it's a row. So row is gonna be the limit as n approaches infinity. And we're gonna look at, this will be the next term divided by the previous term. So we're looking at the ratio of two uh, adjacent terms. So if rho is less than one, then summation a n converges. If rho is greater than one, summation a n diverges. And what did we get if rho equals one? Inconclusive. So what did we do in that ca case? So if we get inconclusive, we have to use another test. So what I'm going to do is link on Canvas the lectures from the end of Calculus 2. So if you don't know the other five or so tests, there's integral test, comparison test, limit comparison test, nth term test for divergence, and of course there's the p-series and geometric series that you can compare to. It's also the sandwich, uh, this, I don't, it's the sandwich test, or if you're like less, oh, that was a regular comparison test, yeah, with the inequalities. So there's about six other tests that you should have learned in Calc 2 that I'm not going to go over all of them right now. So this is just the ratio test right here. So if you get row equals one, inconclusive, use another test. You will find that at the endpoints, you're going to have inconclusiveness. And you're going to have to use another test. Oh, an integral test, if I didn't say that one. So you're going to have to use, on the homeworks, another test from chapter 10. So use another test from chapter 10. And every reference I make to chapters and sections is going to be that same 12th edition calculus book. So that was basically a summary of chapter 10 up to uh, power series. So now we're going to look at power series. That was a regular series up there. So now we're going to look at a power series. So power series is still a summation, but now it's a n times x minus x naught to the nth power. So it's actually a special type of series that has a variable inside of it. X is the variable, and X naught is where the power series is centered. So this power series is centered at X equals X naught. So when X actually equals X naught, if we just plug in x naught for x, what is x naught minus x naught? Zero. 
So we get summation of a n times 0. What is any number times 0? I know these are difficult questions. That'll be 0. And what do we get if we add up infinite zeros? Keep getting 0. So if x equals x naught, your sum is going to be 0. doesn't matter what an is for any of the n values. So this series will always converge at the center x value. So you always get convergence at the center x value. Series. How do you pluralize series? Series. Power series. Power series always converge at x equals x naught. So at their center value, they're guaranteed to converge. Now, when we move away from x naught, if we still get convergence, we want to know how far can we move away from x naught and still get convergence. And that distance we go is called the radius of convergence. So we use little r for the radius of convergence. And this radius could be 0, meaning it only converges at x naught. It doesn't converge at any other x values. That would be the smallest radius. And the largest radius could be infinity. So it could converge for every single x value. So I'm going to do something weird. You probably haven't seen before. So that is all real numbers and the value infinity, the thing bigger than all real numbers. So this says r could be any number between 0 and infinity, including infinity. So usually we don't close the interval like that, but in this time, this I want to describe exactly. It's all the positive real numbers, 0 to infinity, union, infinity. So that's what I mean by the closed interval from 0 to infinity. Uh, and if you want to get mathematically correct notation, you should wrap single values in curly brackets. It would be how to correctly write that. Uh, and this just, this right here is just the set that includes just infinity. So that's what, this is set notation, and the only thing in it is infinity. All right, so that's what our radius of convergence could be. And let's do an example where we're going to compute the radius of convergence. So we'll let our, or we'll be given a power series that I'll just make up. Oh. Let's do summation n equals 0 to infinity. Let's do 3 sevenths to the n, x to the n. I want to know uh, when does this converge. All right, so what test are we going to use? The ratio test. All right, strongly recommend you use a ratio test. All right, so, well, first of all, what is, what's our center value right here? What is x naught? It is 0. Why is that? Because x minus 0 to the n is just x to the n. So this is centered at 0. You could write a minus 0 to the nth power, x minus 0 to the nth power, but you can also just write it like this right here. So the centered at 0. So I know for sure if x equals 0, we're adding up a bunch of zeros, and that's going to add up to 0. So it's definitely going to converge when x equals 0. The question is, what other x values is this going to converge for? So we're going to look at the ratio test. All 
right, we have one problem with the hypothesis of the ratio test. There was very little in the hypothesis. What's the only thing in the hypothesis of the ratio test? It's probably impossible to read on that board here. What's the only hypothesis? And greater than zero. So the hypothesis is always listed after the word if. So there's only one thing here, if an greater than zero. So if you look at that example, if x is negative, there's plenty of n values that will make these terms negative. For example, negative 1 is an easy value. All the odd powers of negative 1, they'll be negative terms. So what we're going to do is force this to be positive by putting an absolute value around it. So, but to eliminate negative terms, we're going to use absolute value. So we're going to look at absolute value an plus 1 over an. Can our terms ever equal zero? Absolute value doesn't fix zero. But could our terms ever be zero? Is there an x value that would make these zero? If x is zero, they're going to be zero. So also if x is zero, however, it's going to converge. So we can just assume x is not zero. We know it's going to converge if x is zero. So we'll just assume it's not zero. Uh, we're also going to get absolute convergence, and I don't want to go all the way through the alternating series test. That's another test, but the alternating series section talks about absolute convergence. If a series converges absolutely, it converges conditionally. So what we're going to be testing is absolute convergence here. All right, so let's go ahead and carefully plug these in. So I have three sevenths to the n plus one. x to the n plus 1 divided by 3 sevenths to the n, x to the n. You don't need to wrap x in parentheses. All right, I'm just going to regroup these fractions. Probably more parentheses than we need, but that's okay. All right, what reduces here? Pretty much all the powers. We just have one more of each of the terms in the numerators than denominators. So they're basically completely canceling out here. So we're going to be left with 3 sevenths in our first fraction and x in the second fraction. So any algebra questions on that cancellation? So next up, I'm going to bring the 3 sevenths outside the absolute value. All right, why am I allowed to just bring 3 sevenths outside? It's constant, but what's special about it? You can't just bring any constant outside. It's a positive constant. If it was negative, I'd have to bring out its absolute value or its positive version. But 3 7 is already positive, so I can just bring it out. No problem. And this is not quite rho, but rho equals, well, I, should, I should apply limit on the next line down. So I'm going to let rho equal lim n approaches infinity of 3 7 absolute value of x. This is the easiest limit ever. Does the limit have any effect? No. Why does the limit not have any effect here? No so the ends completely canceled out. So this limit is, the limit part's trivial. It was all just a little a bit of algebra we did. So this will be 3 sevenths absolute value of x. That's the limit right there. And I want to know when rho is less than 1. So it's going to converge when this value is less than 1. So 
how do I solve for absolute value of x? How do I get that 3 7 out of there? Divide by 3 7 or multiply by 7 thirds. So I just got to multiply by the reciprocal, get the 3 7 to the other side as a 7 thirds. It's positive, so I did not flip my inequality when I multiplied. All right, so we have absolute value of x less than 7 thirds. You can split this into a plus minus. When you take out absolute value, you can replace with a plus or minus. You have to put it on the variable side, not the side that uh, is already positive or negative. But the plus minus, it's really important it goes on this side. I'll show you why it won't work on the other side. Now, when you have plus or minus, you're saying the right thing in your head. All you have to do is write the correct thing down. So it's negative x less than 7 thirds. And it's plus or, so it's or x less than 7 thirds. And I'm going to solve for x. How do I solve for x on the left inequality? Multiply by negative 1. That has the effect, obviously, it makes our 7 thirds negative, but more importantly, it flips our inequality backwards because we're multiplying by negative. And I like to put the little number on the left and the big on the right. So I'm just taking the mirror image of that inequality. So x is greater than negative 7 thirds and less than positive 7 thirds. So if I draw a number line, we got negative 7 thirds, positive 7 thirds. So our ratio test just got convergence on the inside part of this interval right there. And what we have to do next is test, is it going to converge at the endpoints? So we're going to test the endpoints next. And unfortunately, we won't be able to use a ratio test when we test the endpoints here. We'll probably be doing limit comparison and uh, alternating series, depending on what side we're looking at.